Hi, uh, I'm Pratish. Uh, today we'll be talking about trigonometry. Um, so this is the first video on trigonometry, and I would like to start with like why do we want to study trigonometry, and and what is trigonometry? So you would certainly know that Euclidean geometry is very fundamental to how we think about nature, like the way we visualize things in physics, for example, is we use Euclidean geometry in the way we think. And often Euclidean geometry requires some amount of innovative thinking to like reason about problems. And often when you want to talk about physics, you don't want geometry to be your bottleneck in thinking about physics. So trigonometry and coordinate geometry are two subjects which try to s make a more systematic study of geometry. And, and what is trigonometry? Trigonometry is about a study of angles. in an algebraic way. So, I mean you would know that algebra, you would feel more comfortable doing algebra uh, and there is like algebra is often you can something you can do m in a more mechanical way whereas geometry often requires a sort of an innovative leap. So, using trigonometry we will be able to reason about geometric problems in a more algebraic way right so so let's start with the very basics of what is an angle right so so you know from basic euclidean geometry that if you have a circle of radius r then the perimeter is equal to 2 pi r so we know this from basic geometry and like a basic reasoning will tell you that okay if i take half of a circle right, the length of the arc of a half a circle is pi r so if i take this length is pi times r similarly if i take a quarter circle so maybe this thing this will be like pi by 2 r right so in general like if i if i t pick out an angle of let's say alpha degrees right like this could be like 60 degrees then you can easily reason that the length of an arc with angle alpha degrees is alpha over 360 times 2 pi r right so this is just basic ratio and proportion type of argument right so let me write this as 2 pi alpha 360 times r right so so, the, like we are more generally taught since school, we have been usually taught to think in terms of degrees and the full circle has 360 degrees. Uh, but now when we want to write the length of an arc, now we have to write this annoying expression which is 2 pi alpha over 360 times r. So, it would be much nicer to call this expression 2 pi alpha over 360 as the angle itself instead of alpha degrees if we call if we could call this as the angle itself so let's if we could define this quantity as the angle then it would be much nicer so uh, so as you like as there are different ways to measure objects like length you measure it in meters and inches and so on similarly this is a different unit of measuring angles so this is angle in radians Right. And uh, thinking in terms of radians is very important. Like my math teacher used to tell me that, you know, when you're learning a new language, you like for example, if I'm trying to speak in English, I should if I want to learn it well, I should not think in a different language. Like think in Hindi and 
translate to English every time I am speaking. Right? You should really start thinking in English if you want to learn English well. Right? Similarly here, thinking in terms of radiance is often the better thing to do because now I can write length of arc with angle theta in radians is, is just r times theta. So, that is why thinking in terms of radians is often the more natural way to think about angles. Now, let us just to be more familiar with this conversion, let us see that so for example, 360 degrees you know is 2 pi radians that is what we just saw here. Right? The perimeter of the entire circle is 2 pi r and 2 pi is the angle of the entire circle. Similarly, 180 degrees is like pi, 90 degrees is like pi over 2 and so on. So, we just saw uh, how to measure angles in degrees and radians and we said that radians is the more natural unit to think about angles. So, that now the length of the arc with angle of theta radians is just r times theta. Uh, so, in the rest of the video we will talk about trigonometric ratios, we will define what they are and we will talk about some trigonometric identities. Like these are the algebraic tools which will help us reason about angles in a more algebraic way. Okay. So, let us look at an angle and let us say that the angle is theta. So, whenever you write theta as the angle, it is assumed that it is in radians because radians is as we know the more natural way of thinking about angles. And now, let us say that the ra radius is r. So, we, we just saw from here that the length of the arc is r times theta. Right? Now, there are other interesting parameters that you would want to know about the angle. For example, if I drop a perpendicular from here, right, what is the height of this line segment? So, so let us call this line segment, right. So, let us call this A, B and C. So, this line segment is the ang the side that is opposite to our angle. The side A C is the side that is adjacent to our angle and this side is the hypotenuse. Right. So, we would like to know what the height of this seg line segment B C is and one thing that you would know from similarity of triangles is that suppose I have two triangles like this A C and let us say this is D and E and this is our angle theta. You know from similarity of triangles that B C divided by A B is equal to, so note that these are right angles equal to D E divided by E D. Right? So, these are two triangles which have all three angles the same and therefore, they are similar. So, the ratio of sides are equal. So, now this by similarity or since because of similarity of triangles this ratio is purely a property of the of the angle and it is not a property of any of the sides. So, we define this quantity this quantity is defined as the sine of the angle sine of the angle right. So, to remember it more easily, let us call sin theta as the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Right? Now, and so for example, now 
you would see that in this thing, if this the hypotenuse is r, the length of the opposite side is now r times sine theta. Right? Similarly, now we can define the ratio of the adjacent upon the hypotenuse. So, so that is defined as cos theta. So now the adjacent side, if since the hypotenuse is of length r, this thing is of length cos theta, right? So in terms of this ratio, it will be AC divided by AB, which is also same as AE divided by AD. This is the cos of the angle. And by similarity of triangles, this is just a property of the angle and does not depend on the sides of the triangle. Okay. So now, we will see our first trigonometric identity. Right? From Pythagoras theorem, We know that for any right angle triangle, the sum of squares of the two sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So, let me write it here in the colloquial language opposite square plus adjacent square is equal to hypotenuse square. This is what Pythagoras theorem tells us, and so if we divide by hypotenuse square throughout we get that opposite upon hypotenuse square plus adjacent upon hypotenuse square is 1. Okay. But if you look at our definitions of sin theta and cos theta, this tells us that sin theta square plus cos theta square is equal to 1. Now, a usual convention to write sin theta square is like you do not want to write the brackets all the time. So, what you do is you write it as sin square theta and cos square theta. So, as to not confuse with for example, sin theta square. This would mean sin of theta square, whereas this is sin of theta the whole square. 